Hello and welcome to the Meeting Your Soul podcast. I'm Farrah, your host, and I am delighted that you're here. It is always such an honor for you to um, spend time with me and to be able to listen in, to be able to tune into this podcast and hopefully be able to receive a few nuggets of wisdom from either ancient teachings that I'm sharing, my personal stories, astrology, conversations that I'm having with people within my community that are typically some badass women and men who have have really accomplished the impossible and overcome a few objectives in order to be exactly where they knew within their hearts that they were meant to be. And I thought today's episode would really just dive into um, some of the obstacles that I've overcome in order to live a more authentic life because I believe from the exterior and especially since I've started this podcast, it might appear as if I've always been able to do this or this has always been very automatic or natural for me, um, but that's actually very much the opposite uh, to be true. So I am going to come in with three major obstacles that I've overcome within my life that have allowed me to be able to be in this space to come from a more conscious point of view in all that I do. And it has not not been overnight. It has not been easy. And I definitely still have a tendency to fall back into old ways sometimes. So really recognizing that this is not, even if you're on your own personal self-discovery journey, that it is not going to be um, immediate, that it won't be something that just magically appears and that you're healed and everything's all good and you never have another um, mistake or make a mistake or have another challenging time within your life. They're going to come up for different reasons, for different times, for different in order to help you evolve. And that's why I truly try to take the look of anything that occurs within my life that has been challenging for me to be able to be an opportunity for me to learn, to grow, and to be able to get one step closer to who I am ultimately meant to be at the end of my life. And I think that sometimes we get stuck, we get um, stagnant, we get complacent, that it's really easy to just think that enough is enough. I've been through too many things already. Like, I don't need to grow anymore. I'm just going to say the way that I am. But I, um, one of my favorite quotes of all time is change is the only constant. So just like a flowing river, we are constantly moving. It's constantly changing. Even if the current doesn't necessarily change in pace, there is a constant flow of different debris that's moving within the water and also the direction of the river can change and we can change courses over the course of our life and I think trusting what's intended um, in order to be able to stay on the path of our deeper consciousness of our soul of our purpose and why we are here allows us to be able to also be a guiding light a path for others to follow as they navigate through their own flow of their worlds and their lives. So I am transparent with sharing these things about my own in order to hopefully be able to help support you um, as you kind of flow through all of it. And um, this is actually all kind of inspired. Am I leaning forward here? Don't mind me, I'm back. Um, Is actually a lot of this is inspired by this book. So I've been reading The Untethered Soul again. And so much of it Um, What I've been reading about so far and the chapters that I've just recently been diving into have been about this really, this flow of um, like a freedom and recognizing that so much of freedom really revolves around allowing yourself to move through the emotions um, from a place of non-judgmental um, acceptance. And I think that that is so difficult and challenging for most of us to do. And I think when you've been hurt, when things haven't necessarily worked out the way that you thought they were going to, or you've been overly kind, or you've been, um, you know, exceeded, um, extended a hand and gotten bit, it can be really hard to go back to that and to be able to regroup and to really even um, allow yourself to reach out again. And um, this uh, this chapter that I was reading was all about, you know, allowing yourself to stay open, to stay untethered, right? To be able to allow yourself to not get lost in um, closing yourself off or even then, you know, becoming a victim, falling to be a victim. Um, and that's, I personally, for me, that's something that's been really challenging. You know, I, I think even within the course of love, it's been very hard for me to open my heart, um, especially after everything that I've been through. I did another podcast on heartbreak and, <clears throat> 
I think over the course of the last couple of years, especially after getting divorced, it was really challenging for me to even consider loving anyone again. And um, that if I would even want to put myself into that situation and to be that vulnerable and that willing to be able to really, you know, create a life with someone else was something that I was resisting on all fronts. And I um, honestly was like, I'm good. I'm, I'm cool. I'm chilling. I don't really, I don't really need to do that again. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I think I, I got my, I filled up my cup for my lifetime and I think I'm just going to move along and just be able to do my thing. Um, <laughs> and, um, I know that sounds a little ludicrous, but I'm telling you, that's where I was at. Cause I, um, I think I trusted my partner so much. I trusted them with everything. I thought that they would always have my back. I thought that they would never do anything to hurt me. And that just simply wasn't the case. And I think when I came to terms with what did occur within our relationship, I, um, was really jaded. I was really disappointed and I, um, but not even in the other person, but more in myself that I had abandoned myself to the extent that I did, that I didn't, um, that I lost myself into someone else that I really, you know, turned down the volume of my own intuition in order to accommodate and please the other person that I was with. And there may have been certain conditions that put me into that situation where I felt like that's what I needed to do. But nonetheless, I made the choice to do that. And I was already, so kind of backtrack a little bit. This is, um, so I'm 36, I'm almost 30, I'll be turning 37 this year. And this was, we split three years ago and I went through this kind of uh, fully uh, abandoning myself, um, probably in 2017. I also was going through a depression at that point. Um, I was really struggling with understanding who I was and what I wanted to, how I wanted to show up in the world. And I think that I leaned so fully into that relationship as validation that I was still okay, that I was enough. And that I um, was so insecure with where I was at that point that I am, um, I became, um, I got manipulated into believing that um, that was always going to be the case versus um, just a period within my life. And I, I know that can be hard for couples that have been together for a long time. When you have someone that's struggling with mental health, it can be really overwhelming. It could be challenging to you know, continuously show up for them, to continuously encourage them and motivate them and remind them of their worth, you know, and um, it took, I definitely pulled myself out of that and I helped recover and then, you know, went on to, you know, start my real estate business, was extremely successful within my first year, continued to be after that, um, really started to build my confidence in who I was again and really own my own power because I had lost it. I lost it completely. And, um, and to then fast forward to be where I am now. So, and being in a very secured and confident state. But I would say just to highlight the fact that it wasn't always constant. And then to backtrack even more before that occurred is I had already gone through yoga teacher training. I had already gone through a lot of self-discovery. I was, you know, back when I was in my mid twenties, um, probably like 2012, um, I was in the most synced aligned space that I could possibly be. Like I was in cloud nine. Like I was like, Com like confirmed with who I was. I felt my in sync with my intuition. I was like living my life. I was completely moving in the direction that I knew God had intended me to. Like I was so aligned at that point. But then there's things that come up where you make mistakes. Things don't necessarily work out the way you think they're going to, or it's like, you know, I'm impatient. Um, <laughs> and so for me, Sometimes I, once I know that kind of some of a direction of where I'm supposed to go, I just like plow ahead like a crazy person, like a little ram, just like pushing my way through. Um, I am, I, we're in Aries season right now and I do, I'm on the cusp of being an Aries moon. So I do have some Aries moon tendencies, which is like that with the Taurus moon is like the most stubborn driven, like take sh no shits, like keep it going, like plow, like a bull in a China shop kind of mentality. Um, but I, um, so I did so at that point, but I think I was wasn't ready necessarily. And I took that as very much as like a, a knock to my ego versus something that was like, no, no, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail. It's how you get back up. It's the lessons that you learn to get back up. And I think that ultimately that's the biggest lesson that I've learned within life. And as a reminder that, um, just because it doesn't work out perfectly the first time doesn't mean that you're not meant to do it just because you 
maybe make some mistakes or things don't pan out exactly to plan doesn't mean that it was a terrible plan to start with. It just means there was moments of refinement. Like the more that we're able to lean in to that refinement phase and period and honestly always maintain it, always keep that in the back of our minds that we do want to get better, that we do want to strive to continue to grow and to um, really help transcend each version of ourselves and take ourselves to the next level. There's a lot of um, personal growth that occurs within that, but it's all can be really messy like life's messy so like don't think that just because you fell down or you let's be honest you skinned you like flew off a bike and tripled toppled over the, the handlebars and then like a, like skinned broke your leg or I don't know like skinned your whole leg and like you're like getting back up like don't think that that means that you shouldn't continue on like don't give up don't give up. And I think that the biggest lesson from, especially from the conversations I've had with other people that really have gotten to that place of success and have achieved things that they never dreamed possible was never to give up, to be resilient, to recognize that those stumbling blocks, those failures were actually intended to occur, that that was a part of the journey, that we wouldn't truly appreciate where they wouldn't appreciate where they are now if they hadn't have had those periods of times within their life where things were astray, you know, when things got fucked up for a while and that they were able to then integrate those lessons, but they continued on. And I think that the biggest piece of lesson that I've learned within my life is to continue on. But when I was younger, I had a harder time staying focused because I just thought that if it wasn't perfectly to plan, because so much of my life was just flowing so organically and naturally that I was like, if it doesn't go to plan, then I need to regroup completely. I need to completely pivot. And I recognize now that that wasn't really always the case, that sometimes it's just a minor shift in direction, um, you know, a couple degrees, but then you stay on that same navigational path, right? And that it would help me then ultimately arrive and be the person that I needed to be in order to show up at that point in time when the right door was opening for me and that I was ready to walk through it and the version of me that God or universe or whatever you want to label that was intended for me to walk through it as. And um, I think over time though, and I think especially in terms of love, I've um, allowed my heart to... Um, I get closed off to cut all of the ties to push people away to lean into solitude and I I I like being alone I'm very comfortable being alone I actually prefer solitude um but and but I love being around people and I have such an amazing group and I think ultimately a huge piece of that was me getting the right people around me that I wanted to be able to communicate and chat with and stay in touch with and um that did lift me up that did motivate me that did encourage me and I had to expand that and really create that after my divorce because I didn't necessarily have that so much of that was completely relied upon him and I think even a learning block for me going forward is to not fully rely on just one person for all of that because that's just not realistic um, and so it's important to have multiple people within your life to be able to support you um, for different reasons you have different people in your life for different points in time and for different hobbies that you like to do together you know one that's going to shoot it to you straight while another person's going to maybe be a little softer and more nurturing like there's a reason why each person is meant to be in your life and really honoring those relationships and cherishing them is above all something that has been such a blessing um, throughout all of the transitions within my life to have the people that I do has um, allowed me to become the woman that I was meant to be. And I know that each person that's showed up in my life has continued to be in my life has allowed me to find that version of myself and inspired me to do so. And, um, but again, none of that's been easy too. None of that has necessarily been straightforward. Um, you know, there was a lot of hurdles to overcome even within that and I think so often we think like well if it, one thing goes wrong it's all going to shit and that's just not the case um, sometimes you have to learn things about each other um, sometimes you need to get um, to learn something about yourself in order to be able to show up more fully for the other person and um, I'm just so blessed um, especially within um, friends and family of the people that have been by my side because I um, don't think I could have made it throughout this process without them so I know that that's a huge one for me and um, something that I'm just really grateful to have this cocoon around me of people and love and support. So um, 
all that goes to say that I do encourage for you to recognize who your people are, to be able to lean on them in the more challenging times, um, but then also to celebrate with them, to also reach out to them when things go well, um, and also to be able to encourage one another and also be there as a confidant for them um, with whatever they're going through so that it can really have that equal exchange of energy on both sides within your relationships um, on all fronts. And I think that's critical. That's really key um, in order to foster um, more deeper relationships and friendships um, so that you don't just see the surface level of things, but that you see the real person and you're there for them. And that um, that can be a whole wealth of love that I think is vastly underrated within our society. Um, friendships, community is so key. Um, I, Ikigai that I read, which is like the Japanese philosophy around finding your soul's purpose, um, the blue zones, which indicates areas within in the world where um, people tend to live the longest like the average um, expect life expectancy is the longest um, in particular areas it's very it's very concentrated it's it's fascinating but um one of the like concepts when they did the studies within all of these communities one of the key factors in longevity was having community that surrounds you that supports you like to have people to lean on when you're having troubling times um to be able to you know if some elderly need you know help me cooking food that there would be people that would go over there that would spend time with them to be able to laugh to be able to commune with people um to be able to enjoy other people's company was such a huge part of that and that 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 created that contribute or contributed towards their overall well-being and quality of life and the quality of life i think is ultimately what we're all striving for right we all are looking to improve the quality of our life and that a key part of that is the relationships that we have and i think also just being able to identify who those people are and to keep them close and to foster those friendships and relationships and family members and everything that goes along with it so I would say that is one of the biggest hurdles I've, I've overcome within my life is identifying who those people are. I think that um, really editing that group was a, a, a really tumultuous time within my life, um, especially once I split from my ex. So much of that was overlap to really be able to kind of parse through that was, um, you know, a, a couple year long process, to be perfectly honest. Um, and also to remain open um, to be able to connect with people again after I'd gone through all of this. And even during that time, having challenging moments with people that were really close to me that I was triggering, that I was um, kind of um, unintentionally sh shielding, turning a mirror to because I was shaking up my entire life. I literally shook up my entire life and was at a point to where like, I literally like, flipped it all upside down. I literally burned it down to the ground. I'm going to be honest with you. I burned everything. And so many people, especially that follow me on social media that know me on the peripheral, like didn't even have any idea what was going on with my life. And so many people commented like, oh, you're shiny and you're, you look so amazing. And you look so happy. Like I was going through literally the most traumatic and stressful time of my entire fucking life. Was it intended to be where I needed to be? Hell yeah. Like I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. Like I'm still making my way. I'm not, I haven't arrived, but I'm in direction. I know that's where I'm headed. But like, did I need to go through that in order to be able to build the strength and the resiliency that I needed and to be able to, uh, I'm assuming even in this path to be able to continue to do so? Yes, exactly. And so, but during that time, people were like, oh, you just seem so great. You seem so happy. You know, and I was like, I think there was a huge weight lift off my shoulders of getting out of the marriage and all of that. But at the same time, like it's heartbreaking. It was fucking heartbreaking. This is years ago now. And I still like want to cry thinking about it. Like I lost my best friend. I lost my partner. I lost the life that I was created, spent 10 years over a decade creating. I lost, um, a, a, family within like the family unit of us. My daughter became a single mom, was still dealing with stressful job, had to move multiple times. I reconstructed my entire life from scratch, which is incredible. And like, so like it was exhilarating in a way that I was able to do that. And also just to be able to be in this new phase of life, to be able to create what I wanted to create, to be able to really align with what I wanted versus always having to be mindful of what the other person wanted or compromising. Um, and I think I just never really lived alone. I never had any of that independence. So there was um, excitement around that, but it wasn't, it didn't mean that I didn't stay up a lot of nights crying, you know, like I, um, 
and I, I still miss him. I miss, I miss the relationship that we had. It was a really good one for a really long time. So, um, I think I, I've, I'm done grieving that, but at the same time, it didn't mean that it never meant anything to me or that it was easy and like a piece of cake to move forward from that. So, um, even come to say like being able to lean on your group, your crew to be able to support you. And also to know that this too shall pass that to remain like that, that continue to flow, to continue to move, to continue to trust yourself, to lean into your intuition and recognize that even if things don't go perfectly at our plan, or there's moments where things get a little off kilter, you make a mistake that it's okay to get back up and to continue on. And, um, that is a part of the process as well. How we recover from something is sometimes even more important than how we initially arrived in that spot, right? So if you, um, you know, I was going to create a metaphor, but we'll just keep rolling with it. But I am, um, I do believe that all of it was meant to be, all of it was a part of the path, all of it was a part of the plan and that I just continue on. But even most recently, you know, and like I said, I bring this up because I think that people think my life is peachy keen, that it's very easy, that it's, you know, that I'm, I've, you know, figured a lot of things out. And then I just move forward with like, you know, with sunshine and rainbows and, you know, I love the sunshine and I love rainbows and I love all the things. Um, and I do, let's be honest, I would love to be in a, a utopia <laughs> of a world, but, um, that's just not exactly where I exist. That's where no one exists. And so I can think of, but I've trained myself to think about the positive. I have literally changed the pathways of my brain in order to focus on what goes well within my life. I have taught myself how to do that. I am actually a natural catastrophizer. I'm one that immediately thinks of what could go wrong in most situations. I am a very quick to assess the situation and very quick to assess what could go wrong. How could I get hurt? And like, how do I curb some of that in order to stay safe? You know, my ego works very quickly in that part of it. And that is ego. Ego is intended to protect us in a certain extent. It's fear-based, but there's um, survival, like from our survival mechanisms within our brain, there is an intention of why we have that thought process that comes up. We're literally meant to notice the things that could potentially harm us around us. Our brains are literally um, like, like programmed to look for that in order to protect us from safety. But what is intended within our lives now as dangerous, like possible danger is very different than a cheetah that's about to attack us right? Like it's very different than, um, an e like an email that comes through that is causes cortisol levels within our bodies to skyrocket. Like that isn't necessarily as threatening as like, that's actually like life threatening as a cheetah or a predator. But at the same time, our bodies respond in the same way. And that's, the key part of it is that we're in a place now where we're constantly in a state of fight or flight because of external circumstances that are occurring within our lives. And I think also just the amount of access that technology has to us on an ongoing basis, that we're constantly bombarded with these signals from everything else going on around us, that we lose touch with who we really are. We lose touch with what we want. We lose touch with our soul and our intention and our hearts because there's so much that's trying to distract us from it. And um, I think choosing and consciously choosing for me to clear my mind, to meditate, to do my rituals, to do the things that help me stay grounded. And for me to consciously make the choice to focus on what I want instead of what I don't want has been an absolute fucking game changer for me. I literally changed my life because of it. And when I say I changed my life, when I, back in 2000, you know, 10, I started practicing yoga on a regular basis. I've been practicing yoga at Hot Yoga Queen Anne for over 14 years now. That's insane to think about, but it's true. And I remember I started January of 2010 and I was there and I went five days a week and I like started listening to the teachers talk about mindset and about the power of intention and manifestation and about presence and about closing my mind off and turning it off and being able to just be. And to say that I was in an anxious, overwhelmed, borderline like waves of depression before that is no lie. Like that was majority of my life up until that point. And I didn't know who I was because I was so concerned with being who everyone wanted me to be. And that was what I was experiencing up until my mid twenties. Like I was trying to be the perfect girlfriend. I 
partied. I had extreme anxiety. I was trying to be what my parents wanted me to be. I was trying to be what everyone else wanted me to be, that I lost sight of who I was. Even that, I don't even know if I really knew at that point who I was. I knew there was inklings of it. There was moments where I would get reflections of it. There's moments where I would see it, but I um, was so caught up. I don't think I really even knew. And then once I went through yoga teacher training and then I did a lot of work, a lot of deep work. And thank God for Sylvia Mardini, who I essentially at that point had saved me from myself because I was going, I would have self-sabotaged on my own. I, I've always been a little, um, I don't want to say reckless. I'm not reckless, but um, self-sabotage. <laughs> I am. Um, I think I can do everything. And so I try to. And then I also will rip myself apart mentally and physically sometimes when I'm not in a good space. And, um, I, I think I got to the point where I was abusing a lot of alcohol. I was abusing a lot of things that, um, I shouldn't have been. And, um, what I think we're going to end up ultimately leading me to my demise if I wouldn't have, I've always been able to kind of keep reins on it, but I, um, and I always was, you know, had a job and held a job and did all that stuff. But I, um, I teetered the line a lot and, um, of just being, um, what's the word? I just push the limits of everything. And I, um, I was fine. I always got through. Um, but I think I was never really happy. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Like I really wasn't at peace. I was never at peace with myself. I was never at peace with my life. I was never at peace with my relationships. I was never at peace with anything. I hated everything. I like, I literally felt like a piece of shit most of the time. I felt like nothing. I've not felt like I was unworthy. I felt like I just was, um, you know, and people that know me are like, fair, you've always been so confident. You've always portrayed just this air of control and grace. And I'm like, like, and, and sometimes I do. I think sometimes I have moments where that I am able to like embody that fully. Um, but then there was a lot of times where I didn't. And, um, that's usually when I would just spiral and, um, block out or do something and, um, and then recover and then kind of get my life together. And thankfully I swear to God, I have the angels watching over me because, um, there should have been a lot of times where things should have probably gone worse, but they didn't. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm really, 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 I praise God every day. That's, that's for sure. I praise God. I thank God every day for my life and for where I'm at and for my family and for the people in it. Cause I know that I wouldn't be where I was today if I had, a, I had every single person in my life that had influenced me up until this point. So grateful. So, um, so Sylvia, I went through yoga teacher training. I really changed my life around. I stopped drinking as much. I really started doing meditation. I started working out, started really focusing on just cleansing my body, my aura, recognizing that I was a deeply intuitive being that I always have felt a lot, that I've always been really receptive. I've always been empathic. I've always been slightly overwhelmed by the everything else around me and the emotions and feelings and so many different survival mechanisms I picked up as a kid growing up, um, in more tumultuous environments to where this is how I learned how to survive. And I think it's where a lot of people learn how to survive. Um, and it's has, was not easy, but then once I recognized the pattern that was occurring, I knew I had a choice to either continue on that path or I had a choice to change it. And I knew that the joy and the peace that I felt within my soul when I was like cleared mind, not worrying about shit that didn't matter, that I wasn't like going off and just creating issues when there were none, that I knew that if I did that, that I would be a happier and more complete human being and that I would actually live this life as I was intended to live it. And at that point, I knew that I was meant to help people find peace within because of how important it was for me because I just never knew it was possible. And once I realized that it was, I was so determined to help other people find it. And so I got my yoga teacher training and then I really started on this path where I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing these things. Um, and it's been incredible. And I've been on it the whole time. You know, obviously I always, I've always had my psychology background, but to be able to incorporate, um, a lot of the, um, yogic traditions, the, um, spiritual texts that I've read, the alchemists, the uh, four agreements, um, to read about living your yoga, about incorporating the yamas and yamas, um, the power of now, um, and tethered soul. This is like the third time that I've read it. Um, um, Brené Brown, the em embracing your vulnerability. There's so many teachers and wisdoms out there, the Bhagavad Gita, like another game changer. So many of the autobiography of Yogi was one of the first spiritual books I read, changed my life forever. Um, Power of Now was definitely a huge one in that too. Like 
all of them have transformed the way that I view the world and view myself, um, that I knew that once I was on that path, I could never go back. But even on that path, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Like it doesn't, it's not easy. It's actually way fucking harder to be perfectly honest. Like it's harder because you have to face yourself. You have to face your demons. You have to face these things that come up. Those moments when you question yourself, the self doubt, the um, moments of struggle, the, also the characteristics about you that are things that you're meant to work through within this life. Like you are intended to be able to be in this world and to live and operate from a peaceful state of joy, but that that doesn't how you achieve your joy is not always automatic and to feel your emotions fully is a part of life too and i feel like right now i'm really learning how to ride the waves of being emotionally provoked without exploding i also a lot of people don't know this about me but i actually have a little bit of a temper um and i am really calm until i'm not and then i will erupt and I know this about myself, trust me, it's very something I'm aware of and I'm working on it. Um, so for me right now, especially is something where I'm, and I'm not very easily provoked. That's the thing is I, I'm hardly ever provoked. And like more often than that, I shake things off and I was like, whatever, it's fucking, it's not a big deal. I don't care. Um, but if it is something I care truly about, or I feel like if someone is trying to push my buttons or push me in a corner or is really intending to hurt me, it's really hard for me to just like brush that off. Like I really will like, check someone real quick and I am recognizing the power of being still to pause before I react um, but also recognizing it's okay to hiss you know at someone who comes at you in an aggressive manner um, it doesn't mean you have to bite them but it's okay for you to hiss I was actually the and I, I'm using this phrase but I was like this is so random but um I was just reading, um, uh, what was it, Lunch with Ganesha, which I put in for one of my lists for um, books to read, but it's so cute and it has so many different stories and they'll just folklore and I, I just love um, the Hindu tradition. So it's always fun to, for me to read and I just feel like it's so applicable and I connect with it on a deeper level. But anyway, so it was talking about how um, there was a snake that um, kept biting everyone. And so I, I don't remember exactly what God it was, but they came and they were like, you need to stop biting people. And they were like, if you don't stop biting people, blah, blah, blah like warned. And um, the snake was like, fine, fine, fine. I'll stop biting everyone. And so then they start slithering and they're kind of moving along. And um, then they end up getting like, beat up sort of thrashed by everybody right so then the bear beats it up the other like a person comes and like hits it with a hammer like all these people are just like abusing it right so taking advantage of it and so then the the saint comes back to whatever the original god was i feel bad i don't remember who this was i can't remember i don't think it was ganesha but um vishnu i think i don't know i don't know i'm not going to put words into it but they come back and um the sink was like, see, look what you told me. I wasn't allowed to bite anybody. And look what happened to me. I'm now beat up. I'm hurt, you know? And then the God was like, I told you you couldn't bite, but I never told you you couldn't hiss. And right now I'm in the era of learning how to hiss instead of bite because I tend to bite and I don't hiss. Actually, there's no hissing. It just comes straight up. I just bite. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this isn't funny. It's probably like, especially the bit you my mad. But um, there is this opportunity to be able to like take a step back and to be able to defend yourself, to protect yourself, to protect your peace, to protect your heart, to protect everything that you do. But at the same time, not to do it with the intent of harming someone. Because I think that that's when that shift changes. When you say something with the intent of harming them and to really break them down and cut them down, which is my weakness that's where i go wrong is if i feel like someone hurts me i do definitely intend to hurt them back um is that that's not going that keeps the cycle going that keeps the cycle of hurt that keeps the cycle of trauma that keeps the cycle of pain being inflicted throughout this entire world and the collective um across human race that we just keep hurting one another and it's like we gotta stop it it has to stop somewhere right? And like, literally it has to stop somewhere. So like, who's going to stop it? The only person that you have control over is yourself. Life is never going to be perfect. And I think that that's the conclusion that I've come to within life that, um, uh, one of, um, Eckhart Tolle's one of my favorite quotes with him is like, why, um, how do you know if something is meant to be occurring? And it's like, because it's what is that occurring in front of you? <laughs> Resistance, stress and suffering is caused by the resistance of what is. 
So like when things are occurring within your life to try to ride that wave to be able to um, kind of just like lean into whatever is occurring from this non-judgmental space to be able to open, receive the lessons and the nourishment that it offers you. If that's slowing down for a period of time or if that's speeding up and there's a lot of excitement and action that's occurring within your life, there is ebbs and flows that occur for a purpose. I think trusting in whatever that process is for you um, will create a, a space for you to be able to actually enjoy Enjoy life to be able to um, be able to experience things that come up from a place of love for yourself, compassion for yourself and for others, and hopefully be able to use it as a tool that galvanizes us uh, closer as a larger group and as a community that surrounds you. So I am, um, as always, so grateful for you to listen and thank you for letting me share a little bit more about my story um, and also to recognize and to acknowledge that no one has it all figured out that we're all doing this together but that we are meant to help support each other in that process and that's why i created this podcast that is why i think it's so important for us to have these conversations because it's an opportunity for all of us to be able to identify what's really going on within our lives and the lessons that we're meant to learn along the way so that we can move forward from a place of accomplishment of um, you know, of love and ultimately of connection and, um, so that we can truly find why, why we're here and to be able to live that path and all that we do. So, um, feel free to reach out if you want to share, um, some things that you've overcome that maybe at the time you didn't fully understand, but then you uh, ended up exactly where you're meant to be, or maybe even an opportunity where things were really challenging and you kept, maintained faith, you overcame it, um, and then you were able to see the other side of where it landed you. Um, I think those are the stories that often get left behind or even forgotten because we want to see this instant success. We see these overnight um, experiences. And for a lot of people, that's just not the case. That's not the reality of what's going on. Um, and then we feel like we're doing something wrong or that it's not where, you know, we, this isn't the plan that's meant to be, even if your heart is like guiding you and directing you in this direction, like always listen to the strange pulls of your heart. So it will never lead you astray. Rumi, it's one of my favorite quotes I say all the time. And it's so true. Um, so this is cheers to listening to yourself, to listening to yourself, to trusting your intuition, trusting what you're intended to do, and letting that be the guide um, that leads you um, on this journey of life. I love you. Reach out. Let me know if you have any questions. You can catch me on the gram at Ferrachino, F-E-R-R-A-H-C-H-I-N-O. Um, if you want to work with me on the coaching level, I just released my Shine Bright program, um, which is available online and then it includes three coaching sessions. If you'd like to meet together to be able to talk more about it, would love to um, set up an exploration call where we'll dive deeper or you can always um, sign up for the program, read more about it on my website, coachingwithfair.com. All right. Talk to you soon.